Let me pray for us, okay? God, we invite you, oh God, to come. We invite your spirit, God, to illumine our minds and our hearts, God, to feed from your word, to hear your words, God, to hear your hear you minister and disciple us, God, to cause change in our hearts, to transformation, repentance, and hope and uh, love, God, for you and, and for others. So, God, we pray for just the empowering of your spirit, God, to open our and awaken our darkened minds, God. Push against the sin in our hearts and the darkness, God, so that we would worship you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so um, I would like to start with uh, a verse from the Old Testament. Once we get that up. It's not showing, okay, one second. It says I am connected. Let me disconnect and let me try again. Great. All right. So uh, we're in this, just as uh, from last week, we're, we're in this like, we're at the top of the roller coaster in the apex of Galatians. And uh, I want to start with the verse in the Old Testament. It's um, one of my favorite verses. It should be one of your favorite verses. Ezekiel 36 26 to 27. Uh, Henry talked about this briefly last week, I believe. Uh, So this is the prophet Ezekiel. And this is probably one of the most clear promises of God in the Old Testament of the coming Jesus Christ and the new covenant. Okay? So this is probably one of the most clear promises Uh, in the book of Ezekiel. And it gets specific into the things that God will do, what he promises that he will do when Christ comes, okay? So this is God saying, and I will give you a new heart, okay? And I will put my spirit in you. Within you, okay? Daniel, Luke, Nate, Hedo, Jeremy, right? Like the Spirit of God in Christ lives in you. That is incredible. The maker of heaven and earth, the Alpha and Omega, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ is gifted inside of you, right? And what will that spirit do, okay? The spirit will cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So the spirit of God comes into the heart of new believers through Jesus Christ, okay? Through the cross and, his, and the Christ's resurrection. And it doesn't just like, hang out there for fun, right? (laughs) It's not a lot of fun in here, right? It's not just hanging out for fun, okay? It does something. The union with God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit living in you, it does stuff. And what it does is it causes you and I, it stirs in us a desire to obey God. Right? That's, the, that's the Holy Spirit's job, is to stir in your heart right, a desire to obey God. And it's a new heart. right? So the reason that it has to come is because you can't do it on your own. That, that is like the summary of the Old Testament. You can try. You can try on your own. You can try with your old heart. You can try without the Holy Spirit. But 
You know, it's not going to work. You just can't. You can't love God without the Holy Spirit, okay, without God's intervention. So the Spirit of God, so, so God realizing that, I mean, he knew that from the beginning, but realizing that said, well, I'm going to give him a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, and that Spirit is going to be in union with us to cause us to walk, right, and obey God's commandments. So now let's jump to Galatians, okay? And remember, Paul is talking to young Christians. So in many ways, you know, when I was thinking about this last night, like, you know, this is like Jesus Christ discipling young believers. This is God's word, right? So God himself is giving us his words and teaching us believers, young and old, right, what it means to walk in the Spirit, so I'm going to review some slides, uh, some verses from last week. But I say, walk by the Spirit. And if you're like me and you read that, you're like, uh, okay, that's a nice idea, right? Like theologically, conceptually, that sounds really nice to walk by the Spirit. But what does that mean, right? What does that mean when I've crying kids at home and I'm, they're jumping on my nerves and, you know, like, and, and I'm at my wit's end and I'm about to just blow up. What does that mean practically to walk by the Spirit in that moment? And what I said last week is that Paul, Paul's, he, he's sort of, you know, unpacking that. He's pulling the threads. Because again, these are, these are young believers, new believers, Right? probably talking at a conceptual level. Oh, yeah, walk by the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. Well, what does that mean? What does the Spirit actually do? How does it help us in the moment of need? Okay? So we talked last week about one of the things that the Spirit does is that the Spirit, member that lives in us, helps us to resist the desires of the flesh. Okay? And I talked last week about how there's, a, there's two sets of desires, okay? So, so think about this. Jesus Christ is speaking to us and speaking to new believers, young believers, and bringing this awareness. Do you know you have two sets of desires? You have two, you know, you have the... I can't use both hands, all right? So just one hand, all right? Okay. So uh, do you know, so Jesus is, is teaching here. He's saying, you know, the Spirit of God, is, it comes and it wages a war. So now you have two sets of desires. And, and we just got to pause and think about that. If you are a believer in this room, you have two sets of desires that wage war every moment of every day. Okay, so Paul's saying, hey, walk by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit that wants to cause you to obey God's commandments, it's going to wage war now against your flesh. And your flesh wants to do things that, the, that are opposed to the Spirit. Okay, that's what it says. For the desires of the flesh, my pen, okay, desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. So you, on one hand, you have desires of the flesh. And they're waging war and opposition against the Spirit's desires in your heart. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. So you have this other set of desires birthed by the Spirit of God in you that are against the flesh. Okay? You remember my watermelon story last week, right? By the way, I did end up cutting that watermelon. <laughs> I forgot to mention that last week. Okay? Remember, I was, I was like sitting there, like looking at, watching Tammy carry that big watermelon into the kitchen. I'm like, oh, should I help her? Should I not help her? Right? Like there was a war, a silly war, right, in my heart, right? And, and if you are a believer, 
you know that voice that sometimes like non-believers will call it like a conscience, right? But it's not the same as a secular conscience. It's the spirit of God. There's a voice in your heart that is causing you, it's compelling you to want to do the faithful thing in that moment, right? So when we talk sometimes, like the pastors and the elders, we talk about how, you know, if someone is, we, we suspect someone might be hardened, they've, they've dimmed the voice, they've lowered the volume of the voice, right, of the spirit. Because they're constantly waging war. And if you don't want to hear what the spirit has to say, right, then you're letting the flesh overtake the spirit, right? Because they're opposed to each other. The desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit are opposed to each other. But if you are led by the spirit, and I think this is an encouragement from Paul and from God, if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. The law is not your master. The flesh is not your master any longer. So if you remember last week, I said, you want to do these things. It's your birthright. The spirit of God gifted to you through Jesus Christ, the sacrifice and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is your birthright as a son and daughter of God that he is your master now. You want to do these things. You, I want to cut that watermelon and put it away. I want to pray. I want to, you know, console my crying child at 11 p.m. when they won't go to sleep, right? Like, I want to serve I want to sacrifice. I want to surrender. And I know you may not feel like that. So because there is that war that is waging. Okay? But but know this, the spirit one of the spirit's jobs, okay, the Holy Spirit is to stir that desire to oppose the desires of the flesh. And I would even say that it empowers us, right? to obey God, to love God with all our heart, to surrender, right, lesser things, to follow hard after him, to love one another, to be other-centered. So let me finish with one, a uh, couple more verses, okay? So I believe that the reason Paul's writing this, the reason Paul put this here, the reason God put this here is to Make us aware of the warfare, okay? You need to know, we need to know, these early believers in Galatia, they need to know that there are two sets of desires, okay? And then so Paul then says, well, let me give you a little more on that and share with you the evidence of the flesh, okay? When the flesh breeds that desire, Okay, these are, th this is the evidence of what comes out. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, I'm just going to group them a little bit, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, and envy. I hope one thing you notice is the desires of the flesh put self at the center, okay? Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, just self-service, right? It's all about me, right? Idolatry, it puts God to the side, hey, it's me, right? the things that I desire. Divisions, jealousy, anger. If you're a divisive person, right, you're very self-centered. Humble people are not divisive. Drunkenness, orgies, things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things or continue to practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a tough verse, okay? And 
just in like one or two more minutes that I have left. Again, if it is true that the Spirit of God through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ lives like God, we're talking about God here, and he lives within you, okay? I think what Paul is saying is that if that's true, okay, and it's true that God has power and authority, and it's true that the Spirit of God lives in you, it's going to stir a spirit of repentance, okay? You can't, you can't do that and, like, dim the voice forever and then die. Because the spirit, you, you know, it, it, it has desires, and it's going to stir, and it's going to oppose your flesh, okay? So it's a hard verse, but I hope it's hopeful also, right? If we humble ourselves and, and God comes, the spirit the, the Spirit's job will empower us to obey. Amen? It's going to help us. He's a helper. He's going to help you love. He's going to help you love God and love one another. All right? Praise God for that. So the, the next verse after this, which we'll go into next week, is when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So again, he's, he's, I believe Paul and God are educating us to be aware of, of that warfare, to be aware of the desires that are opposed to the Spirit. And then next week, we'll talk about the fruit that comes, the evidence that comes when we are in step with the Spirit. Okay, so let's pray. God, thank you for uh, our time. I just pray, God, I pray that uh, we would just come before you, God, as your people continually needing to be cleansed, God. In faith, in Jesus Christ, in the cross, uh, claiming your victory, God, and your power and this, the gift of the Holy Spirit, God, that helps us to want you and helps us to move towards others, God, to love you radically and to love others radically. So God, I just, I pray that um, there would be repentance and great faith and joy, God, in moving out in love and that this is our birthright, God. You, you give us, God, the ability to resist. You give us the ability to move out, God, empowered by you. So I pray, God, that we would live in that power, that we would claim you, God, your authority and your power in our lives, and we would have great faith in stepping out uh, towards you and towards others. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.